Screening of our short documentary projects we've been working on uh, throughout the first semester here. And uh, yes, we've just uh, done the screening of our documentary. It uh, was real good. Uh, got a good po positive feedback from people in the party. Uh, didn't know much about uh, Nga Reo and the Reo and the Turanga Nahaki. So uh, really hope that uh, the viewers who've seen this. Uh, grasp some information that they never have uh, that they didn't know before. Uh, learn something new, and uh, just to get our hahi uh, out there and uh, kia ora. Uh, kia ora. Um, so, so straight after this interview, we're going to play a short documentary to all our audio out there called uh, Audio Channel. And uh, once again, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, you know you guys have done four months of hard work. Uh, they're actually getting marked right now, so uh, all the best for that. Yeah. And uh, uh, to find out yes, the video. Kia ora. is just a, a term that is used to refer to all Aureo and we have seven and they are Arepa Omeka, Periwiri Tua, Hamuera, Tua Hine, Tua Toru, sorry it goes, Tua Toru and then Tua Hine and um, Te Pao Te Katoa. So when we refer to Ngāreo we refer to more than one Well, the instruments uh, in the band, in Māori, is, is referred to as the guns. Uh, the, the main primary um, purpose of the, of the reo is to first and foremost glorify God, Jehovah, and secondly, to seek out and destroy the works of the demon of, of Satan. So when Ratana, behind our tumwaki, go on to any marae, the tumwaki never goes in front of the band. In fact, nobody goes in front of the band. The band is acknowledged as the spearhead of the movement, the protective cloak, everything in behind the band. So some of these marais today still got curlies waiting around the corner in their carvings, whatever, uh, the mana, the mana, mana Māori, the bad mana. So the band's job is to clear all those out, clear the way for the tumwaki, clear the way for the morihu and the pau. I think the reo was founded on that kōrero. And it was, it was trumpets that, that brought down the walls of uh, Jericho. It wasn't bombs or armies, it was the trumpets. But in the case of the band, Nareo, and the church, the, the walls of Jericho is the breakdown of black magic, Tohungaism, the annihilation of Tohungaism. The code, dress code, the, 
the expectation of the playing ability and the practices you had to attend and the penalty faced if you didn't turn up to the practices. All, all was a bit hard, was harder then in the old days, but now it's not so because of the parking laws. You can't, you know, it was, it was uh, easy for membership to get, get a crack in the head if they played the wrong note. But they can't do that these days, obviously, and so the young ones get, get, um, get, get it light, I reckon. They were a bit soft as a young generation. That's why the bandmaster before this lot, before our current bandmaster, uh, made a stipulation that you had to be 10 years of age. He felt that 10 years of age was a good age whereby the kid could, uh, could uh, handle the discipline. And the discipline I'm talking about when you're at Ratna Park or any gathering of the church, they stand sometimes for three hours whether that be in the hot sun or in the pouring rain, at 10 years old you're able to handle that. I suppose what we really want to know now is the men that come on here. Do the women actually really wear the pants? <laughs> <laughs> Whether they go on for a Literally, point? yes. I could say yes. Um, yeah, <laughs> to a point. <laughs> Support our bandmaster, you know, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. our particular law has got a lot of females in it and has for, for a little while. Um, so, Uncle Murphy is our bast bandmaster, he can't help but listen to us. <laughs> There's a lot of us there. Um, in saying that, though, he he's always lets us have our say and then he makes the final decision, decision. which we, yeah. we support, no matter what the decision <coughs> is, we support what he decides. Charlie's Angels movie in particular we're talking about because Uncle Merv had so many females in his um, reel and not that many males I think, not that many no, males, maybe two or three and the rest all women, well that's what we were referred to with Merv's Angels instead of Charlie's Angels so oh. <laughs> I don't know about the Angels but, but yeah. We're quite mixed in yeah. Te Whaitakato, yeah. But then in saying that, um, we just we, the girls are only allowed to wear um, skirts, no trousers, and I think that could be pertaining to our name, to file to Katawa, the mother of all, so it wouldn't look appropriate with the mother and the trousers. Um, everything of the women is the same of the man, the man's role, like we're all expected to do the same job. Um, at the end of the day, the women's natural instinct is to jump into that supportive role. And with the rangatahi coming through, I think it's like who are saying motherly instincts to bring them through to get them up to date with what they need to know and teach them. In the day, we had a, we had a fellow called Morris Pope. The fellow couldn't read music, but he played, someone played him a tune a couple of times, he could play that music straight back. And he was that good. But the bandmaster, the current bandmaster and the bandmaster before him uh, has, um, has maintained that everyone needs to start learning to, how to read music properly. We've got to remember in the time of Ratna, all those bandsmen were exceptional because the man put a man on them. I mean, the bandmaster took a muri, uh, took a tomuri from Kaikwe, put to a brass band, couldn't read a note of music. He was the bandmaster and you know, his band was one of the best, the best band for many years for their ability to play strict time. Peter Willie Tool is one, one of those right up there. I think our Apurutoro at home um, decided um, before him our, um, our bandmaster was our dad, but then he got sick. Um, and then it was the bandmaster before that that chose who he wanted to have take over. So yeah, Apurutoro and our committee um, yeah, at home, so that's our Yeah, the bandmaster, then you have the, the assistant bandmaster or the 2IC, and we do have a couple of girls whose 2ICs are women. Mum is one, and then Hamawera also has a female who's in the 2IC role, so if, if the bandmasters are away, you're both males, then they would take over and I guess the answer is yes. And to, uh, Tilmika's got a, uh, has now got oh, a yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's got a, uh, to I see a woman bandmaster. Yeah. And, and as for us, because we've recently just lost our bandmaster, so his wife is just, well, there to affi us, but we haven't selected one in Toronto. Mm -hmm. So you can watch it the space. So the answer, hi. <laughs>
te mangai kei roto te kaitau toko mai Ai ane ake nei ai information. Um, I'm glad here and to Kua Hega, thank you, uh, the Whānau no Tauranga, uh, members of the Whāia Te Katoa. Kia ora, uh, my Whānau, my, my father, um, tēnā koe, and to uh, our team, us, the Four, four Boys production, uh, mean, mean job, mean job. Kia ora.